What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea. We're engaged and we like to get scared together. Thought you forgot your name for a second. I know. I almost did. <laughs> <laughs> a lot going on right now. My brain is is uh, mush. Well, that's okay because we don't need a non-mushy brain to talk about Deep Rising. No. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think this is actually going to be the last creature feature we do for a bit because I think this is the last podcast we're recording in are we gonna take next week off yes we're taking next week off just okay. fyi um i wasn't sure if we were or not but now we are because we know we have more solid dates for our move and mm-hmm. we have to pack a lot of stuff it turns out yeah it, actually all of our stuff so it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah not just a lot yeah and then i think the week we come back like we in the new place but we're not gonna have anything set up it's gonna be this really weird like it's going to look like we're shooting a hostage video, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Where we're just sitting we're... in front of a blank wall. It's going to look like the video that Oscar Isaac shoots in uh, Annihilation, where we're just kind of sitting oh, there God. in front of nothing. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because we, we'll we moved make... that weekend, and then yeah, you want to Yeah, so we'll okay. just do a goof around episode, I think. Okay, you know, well, were you thinking mailbag? Maybe a mailbag. I guess, like, you know... Send us questions, demipod at gmail. I think that'd be good. A fuck around mailbag. A fuck episode. around like Q and A. I'll pick whatever questions I feel like answering. Yeah, so deadbeatpod at gmail.com. Your chance to get your name read on the podcast yeah. in our fuck around new house episode. Okay, yeah, well let's do that. So yeah, you can send us questions about us. You can send us maybe with some would you rather's. You can send us some like I don't know like Klosterman style ethical <laughs> horror themed conundrums whatever you want it'll be a fuck around episode which I know people love yeah but, but that means this one's the last podcast in this apartment yeah that's fucked up that's dude it's crazy it's really weird mm-hmm. um but I'm excited to build a new set because the cool thing is that I get to build my own podcast yes. set because we're no we're going to have them in two separate places. You're going to have the kill count in its own space. And the podcast is in my own little area so that we don't have to keep picking up this table this and moving table. it. Or <laughs> this is, this apartment's become unlivable, honestly, for the <laughs> amount of work we do at home. Uh, we yeah. don't have a dining table. We eat on the couch. Yeah. So I would like to stop doing that. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> so yeah, look forward to a new podcast, uh, a podcast exclusive set. No longer I'm will it so just be excited. the kill count behind us. No longer will I have to worry about if if the kill count set up is a spoiler uh, for the podcast yeah. audience. Because like right now it's three for three from hell. Yeah, which thankfully they already know about. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I kind of want to do, and I mean, who knows if if I change my mind or not, but I kind of want to make the podcast set look like a radio station. Oh, yeah, I like, saying, like very, Texas Chainsaw Yeah, too. I'm very inspired by Stretch mm-hmm. and her radio station from Texas Chainsaw too. Cause Stretch is just one of my favorites. So Yeah. And there you go. There's a little sneak peek of what's coming up. But uh I guess So we're going out on deep I rising. No, I, I didn't plan it like that. I would have done something a bit more special, but it's kind of right to <laughs> just <laughs> To like mark a big occasion on the podcast with just a dumb fucking movie, this is a stupid fucking movie. Which is not to say I hated. No, no, no. I I quite enjoyed myself. I had a fun time watching. Lots it. of you wanted this. I forget if I mentioned a lot of requests for Deep Rising, which I'd never seen. I'd never um, I, honestly. I'd never heard of this. Really? I okay. Had no fucking clue what this was. This one. And now that we've done a bunch of creature features, I'm glad that I know the differences between some of these movies. But for a while, Deep Rising, Lake Placid, like those were all just lumped together in my head because they were just 90s. Water based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just I would have never gone out of my way to see them. But this is very different than Lake Placid. (laughs) Yeah, this came out in 1998. It was written and directed by Stephen Sommers, who I'm surprised I never heard of Deep Rising because he did The Mummy the Mm -hmm. following year in 1999. And Little Me was fucking obsessed with The Mummy. Yeah. I can quote most of that movie's dialogue still. 
And uh, yeah, he did The Mummy and The Mummy Returns, which featured The Rock in, I think, his first movie role oh, as the, the weird CGI Scorpion King of all CG. time. I've never seen that movie, but I've <laughs> seen that bit so many times because I'm obsessed <laughs> with the CGI. Yeah. And uh, the fucking guy who plays Benny from The Mummy is in this movie, and I recognized him by his fucking voice. Yeah, I think he's kind of a favorite of Stephen Summers. It makes sense. Is it Summers or Summer? I don't. It's Summers is how it's I written. It's, I think it's Summers. But it might be pronounced Summers. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's Summers. But... Suzanne Summers. It was Suzanne Summers, not Suzanne Summers, and it was spelled yeah. the same. I wonder if they're related. Probably not. She was an Olympic swimmer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Olympic swimmer Susan Sum- Susan. Are you thinking of Summer Sanders? I am thinking of Susan. Summer Sanders, Let's move dude. on. Summer Sanders. There, there it is. I'm, yep. Okay. It's funny because I was thinking about her, and then when you said Suzanne Summers was a swimmer, just nope. I immediately knew what you, <laughs> I immediately knew what you did. Thanks for catching me. Yeah. On that. Oh boy. All right. Deep Rising. This is. Um, I love the plot of this a lot. Yeah. Um. Because we were joking about parts of this plot as being like, wouldn't it be funny if this happened? And then that was the actual yes, plot, which is. That's, I love, I, w- I will say that's a, a underrated talent is to write a script where you maybe know your audience is thinking, dude, wouldn't it be really stupid <laughs> if this happened? And then that's the thing that happens. Cruise ship insurance fraud. I love it. Yeah. We were joking that this was all an insurance fraud setup and then it was. And then it was. And I was like that um, added a few points on to the, to my feelings towards this movie it also just goes full out so a lot of the effects throughout the movie are theme parky yes which we love we're a big fan of theme it's Depending too much in this context movie. i know but it's so fun it turns into a, a stunt show by the end by the end i like that they completely abandon any pretense of it being realistic or like trying to be serious and it does become a full-on stunt show that part I'm fine with. But, like, up until then, I hate I hate when... And you know what? Like, Tremors does this, too. And it's, it's when something's underground or underwater, and it's, like, pushing things up as it comes towards you. You don't and like that? Oh, I like it. It depends on the creature and if I find it believable that the creature is actually doing that. And in this, I don't think it is because these giant worms, I don't know. It just yells to me, we can't afford to show it, so we're just going to do this theme park stunt but they show it a lot and they it do. looks bad it looks shitty that's the other thing with this movie some real bad 1990 1998 cgi there are yeah. a few shots where it looks good for its time <clears throat> for its time uh-huh. i think but not many not many not many at all uh rob Bottin did a yes work. we did not yeah we we were watching the credits, and I was shocked to see. That means that I, some of it has to be practical. Yeah, I'm wondering if he also was maybe just a big part of the design mm-hmm. and less the actual effects. And the animation And sometimes stuff, yeah. filming stuff, you'll have a stand-in effect mm-hmm. of some kind that is then animated over. I don't really know, but... Yeah, I was a little surprised to see his name attached because there's not anything anything name. tangible. Like you don't, you know, I like to feel like I could reach out and touch something on screen and feel like the actors are actually reacting, which is why I I like the theme parky effects because those are I presume something that the actors can see happening or sure. at least the stunt actors can you, see happening. On a couple of notes, I just reviewed The Faculty for Patreon. You watched that movie with me. Yeah. And a few moments of this reminded me of that because in The Faculty, you have this moment where the uh, this monster is swimming through the swimming pool and it's the same kind of theme park effect. But I liked it there because it was like the one scene with it. And then even though The Faculty has some weird looking CG, yeah. at the end, that monster is practical and Elijah Wood is like touching it. I liked and it that. it so Oh, good. But leading up to that, the CGI and that kind of lost me. I was not. <laughs> I like the faculty. Yeah, Check I think you liked Patreon it more than I you. did. I did, for sure. <laughs> but I love what a weird cast in that movie. Good cast here too. Lot yes. of people. You got Famke Jansen coming off. Did you see this was filmed in '96? Supposed Whoa, to, it was supposed really? to come out in '97. Didn't come out till '98. So oh. they filmed this in '96, a year after Goldeneye came out. Which That's was right. She's a Bond girl. She's a she's a 
it, there's some debate whether you can call villainous Bond girls Bond girls, and she is a villain, Zena Anatol. Oh, really? I just figured oh, if no, you're she's... hot and you're in a Bond movie, you're a Bond girl. I think the majority of people would say that, but there is a contingency, I believe, that would say Bond girl is a girl that helps a woman, let's be real, that helps James Bond out and not one of the like villainous women who is oh, like a, a henchwoman to the, the main bad guy because they're never I'd the main bad guy. Okay, so I don't really know James Bond that well. So like Octopussy is not a Bond girl. Mm, she kind of goes back and forth. Or like is Grace Jones a Bond girl? Uh, So under the larger and I believe more popular definition, yes, she would be. But because she in, is in service to Christopher Walken in one of the worst Bond movies ever, uh, the one where David Bowie almost played That's that so- villain. The, what could have been? Dude, I think about the fact that we could have had David Bowie and Grace Jones just... I know. I, I fucking know. the shit me. out of each other on yeah. screen. But but really, she, that was the one where she's in bed with Roger Moore at his oldest, and it looks fucking weird. Anyway. She would destroy him. <laughs> I know. Oh my Under gosh. a stricter Bond girl definition, no, Grace Jones would not be considered. Oh, but again, okay. I think more people consider any Bond girl a Bond girl. Dude, after, uh, <laughs> I promise we'll talk about this movie, but uh, <laughs> One day. after after COVID stops being a thing, in the aftertimes, if you get a chance to see Grace Jones live, oh, yeah. do it. It was a fantastic. Pay as much money as you can afford to pay, like go see her. Um, She's incredible. Mm-hmm. We saw her uh, at the Hollywood Bowl, and it was Blood during moon. the Blood Moon. Dude. <laughs> With Future Islands opening. Yes. Good stuff. It was some like supernatural shit with that blood moon. Yeah. It's like I feel like she was like summoning old ones, you know, the entire <laughs> time. Uh the lead is Treat Williams. Treat Williams, I know from hair. I'm a big fan of the musical hair. Yeah, I'm not familiar with Mr. Version. Williams, but he was, I will say, a treat to me to watch. Yeah, treat I enjoyed Williams him is good. as Diet Han Solo, and they did say the role was offered to Harrison Ford. Yeah, initially. no kidding. No and they fucking didn't kidding. rewrite any of it. There are so many, there are lines lifted <laughs> from Star Wars. He literally says, I've got a bad feeling about this. And they refer to his ship as a, a hunk, hunk of, of junk, junk yeah. a couple of times when he like him and Famke Jensen definitely doing like the Leia role. Yeah. But yeah, he's in <clears throat> hair. He plays Burger B-E-R-G-E-R, who's like the lead hippie. I mean, he's singing hair, the song. Does he get naked? That's the only thing Everyone I know about gets that naked movie, in it. I actually, I haven't seen the movie in a bit. It's Milos Forman. Um, it's a oh, good ass yeah. movie. But, uh, R.I.P. I, does it, I don't remember if they all get naked in it, but I've also seen the stage show and like everyone. It was weird because I, I knew some of the people in it because I saw it in college. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like, oh, man, I'm seeing people I know just naked on oh, stage. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of other people in smaller roles that uh, ended up really having long careers. Cliff Curtis is in here who we just saw in yeah, The Meg, Meg yeah. and he was in Dr. Sleep. Uh, he's playing, you know, you need your, your regular guy who's obsessed with sex and only talks about women. This guy (laughs) in this movie is like, are you okay? (laughs) You you know, like he is so horned up and by like just in general, the testosterone in this movie is out of control. Yeah, because Famke is the only actual woman character. There is another Leela early on, and then yeah. she, they kill her so early. I know, it which sucks. sucked because I liked her a lot. Yeah. I thought she was cool. And I realized I recognize her because she's in the Truman Show. I don't even think oh, she's. Yeah? yeah, not like a huge role, but I just, I've seen the Truman Show so many times. I also that saw her... that she has a part in Spider Man. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know what she plays, though. I think it said Luna she Damon. was a lab assistant. Oh, okay. In that. But, um, yeah. Cliff Curtis? Yeah, Cliff Curtis is just. All he talks about is chicks, and to the point where, when they board the the cruise ship in this, in like one of the, I don't know, there's like some room. It's always it's like a like a CD crew room where the crew works, and for some reason, just like crews on anything are always extremely horny. Like mm-hmm. you think of aliens, right? I feel like they have just pictures of naked chicks everywhere. Even an alien, yeah. I think Dark Star. They have it. It's just like yeah. For some reason, porn proof. pictures on yeah. the wall. Yeah, but he talks about these women like they're real, and it's, and it's he's he, talking to them, and I'm like, dude, it's 1990. Well, they filmed this in the mid 90s, <laughs> apparently. But yeah. I feel like you can 
you can still find your porn. Yeah. You know? And yeah, he's like, he's so fixated on it that he just sits there staring at the wall for long stretches of time. Yeah. Letting people like do nefarious shit behind him that he should be watching. It's but he's just really staring at <laughs> yeah. pictures. Like, calm down, dude. I know. Uh, Clifton Powell is in here as another mercenary guy. Uh, Cliff Curtis is a mercenary guy. So is Clifton Powell, who was we just saw on the channel in Bones. As the yes. dad in Bones. Yeah, yeah. And he's in Ray. He's an awesome actor. And then fucking Kano from Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. is, uh, he's Australian, Trevor Goddard. Uh, rest in peace. The guy, I saw. I was reading yeah, about that. Yeah, passed away when he was 40. Yeah, but uh, Kano from fuck. Mortal Kombat and T-Ray in this movie. Yeah, he's the... Is he the guy who can't stop throwing up at one part? Yeah, he's, all... he's throwing up a lot in this. There's a lot of vomit at one part, and I was not a big fan. They all, again, it's this scene where this crew, just the testosterone, they're all just talking about chicks, and then that guy starts throwing up, and they're all, they all just try to get him to throw up more. <laughs> it's, it's just a lot. By the way, there's so many fucking characters in this movie, mm -hmm. Um, so I'm sorry if we miss a random movie on someone's resume because there are just a bajillion people. I feel like thing. for the people who actually watch the popular movies, there's this guy. Oh, Jim and Hinsu. Oh, Jim and Hinsu, sure. Or Jim uh, Hinsu. Yeah, he. Is. Oh yeah, he's like a. He honestly, I was surprised when he showed up and was not in such a huge role, but that must have been before he got. I'm sure, but big, he's, in, he, he's the bad guy in Furious Seven, and also is in some Marvel movies as Korath the Pursuer. So yeah, I don't know you, who uh, that is, but. Korath heads out there. Yeah, Jimon, he's like award. He's an actor. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wes Studi, the, the Cherokee an actor who plays like the, the head bad guy mercenary. Yes. He was in Dances with Wolves, Last of the Mohicans. So, yeah. The, it's, this cast is crazy. It's and it's the, the 90s diversity. Very diverse, <laughs> which I enjoyed a lot, actually. It, it feels, I mean... It's weird how things like that come and go in waves because the 90s casts tend to be pretty diverse. This one, I mean, this one is pretty exceptionally diverse, it I think, is, except yeah. for there's like two women in it. That's the thing is I think the 90s would uh, sprinkle in the different races and then forget about women yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it, and then in the 2000s, we kind of stopped caring about that so much. We had, we had terrorists to fight, huh? That's right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, what, like, Captain Planet is, like, the, uh, I think, like, a highly yeah, referenced... Yeah, you think of all the, like, kids' cartoons from then. Mm -hmm. Or the, uh, uh, um, the Burger King Kids Club. Oh, did that, were they also yes, diverse? Like, okay, was yeah. there a, a wheelchair yes, kid? There's always a, and, yeah, a wheelchair mm -hmm. person, which yeah. is cool, yeah. I like Degrassi also had the character, Drake. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Drake. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that's an interesting that, like, thing. That that could be its own episode of something else to talk about, that <laughs> wave in the 90s of diverse casting and how, it's not like a new thing. Like, we didn't decide this decade, everything's got to be diverse. It just kind of... What we de what we deem important culturally changes depending on what's going on. Yeah, so we open on uh, South China Sea. Uh, we got Captain Mal here, the Firefly character. Yeah, this character is yeah, Sweet he's William. Han Solo, and also I just thought, oh, it's Firefly. Yeah, he's Nathan Fillion, and this ship he is on looks like absolute shit. It looks like he <laughs> built it himself, and he probably did. I couldn't. I don't really understand what. His job is it's very, the opening of this is very ghost ship because ghost ship is also this kind of weird ragtag crew where they just take commission like no questions asked will take you out to explore X thing in the ocean. Yeah, well, it's him. Looks like co-pilot Layla and then their engineer. <laughs> engineer, yeah, Benny is what I'm going to call him because his mummy character. Sure. Uh, Pantucci, I think. Pantucci, is his, yeah. Tooch, Tooch. His name here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also Joey. It's like Joey Pan. I they did keep because jo when he first said Joey, I was like, "Who the fuck's Joey?" I do love the idea that we got to keep it diverse. So like, we're gonna have an Italian guy. Yeah, I wonder what uh, nationality that guy is in real. Because in the Mummy, he plays a Hungarian. I don't know. And leans heavy on the accent. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're, so they're the crew of this little ship, and they're taking a band of mercenaries mm -hmm. under the control of uh, what's his name, Hanover. Yes. Is the the lead mercenary bad guy. Yeah. And they're yeah, like you said, just a testosterone 
full. They're very they're punching each other for you know fucks. dudes from Predator mm-hmm. kind of. Everyone is extremely macho. And they all like to hit each other. They end up beating up Pantucci when oh he discovers God. the missiles. But then they like they like fucking stomp his ass. They like stomp a mud hole in his ass, and he has one little tiny cut on his head. And I'm like, no, 90s, show us the damage that would happen if these muscle heads just fucking wailed on that guy. It almost turns into the scene from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, though, when oh, they're, yeah, wa- they- they're wailing on Panatucci, and they all start going, I say we hang him. <laughs> I say we kill him. <laughs> I say we tattoo him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Panatucci. <laughs> He really, he really just gets fucked this whole movie. Do you like his character? He's fine. He's yeah, he's a little annoying, but he does have some lines that legit made me laugh. Yeah, if you made this today, well, not today, today. Oh, T.J. Miller. He's T.J. Miller. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I thought he was fine. I just kind of felt bad for if you if you just look at his plot. <laughs> he gets the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> they call him a grease monkey the whole time because he is just a lowly mechanic. Um, his girlfriend dies, and then he ends up stranded on a, a mo- monster island with these two people who are just going to fuck and ignore him the entire time. Yeah. I but... feel bad for him. I guess at least he lives, but, you know. Yeah, but I feel bad for Famke and Treat when he swims ashore because there goes Fuck Island. Yeah, yeah, we were gonna have Fuck Island, and then your that's when your your roommate shows up earlier in the night than you thought they were going to, and you and your your partner were gonna <laughs> fuck in the dorms. Finally, that's what that feels like. Yep. Yeah, Famke Jensen's cool in this. She's like a she's just kind of a criminal, just cr- generic like criminal because they Femme read her Patel. yeah they read her record and attempted murder she, she says it was an ex-boyfriend theft burglary she's yeah, basically fraud. Catwoman. yeah a little because she's a Very jewel thief so. i love the idea of being a jewel thief because i don't know if that's a real thing <laughs> <laughs> jewel thief i think is maybe a bit uh old-fashioned i think it'd just be really hard to be a jewel thief i don't now. think you can be one technologies anymore. too yeah like how do you i don't think you can yeah it'd be like being a bank robber you can't go yeah you can't be a ba- no that's a that's a yeah that's another era you can't just roll up to a bank and tell everyone <laughs> you know when they ask say so and so was here and show everyone your face and ride away in your jalopy or whatever you <laughs> rolled up in. You can't do that anymore. It's a shame. And yeah. also there's really not any actual money at banks anymore, I think. Yeah, you can't steal fucking ones and zeros, man. Yeah. You can't stuff that in a bag. No. Uh yeah, so like the crew finds her. We establish that the guy Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we should explain where they're even at they're going. So this mercenary crew is going to this cruise ship. This fucking CG cruise ship that looks like a cardboard cutout there's floating some, in a bathtub. Yeah, there's some questionable mat shots of this cruise ship. This cruise ship is huge. I don't know what its theme is, because at the first theme. I thought it was China theme. Like well, yeah, Chinese it's in the theme. South China Sea. So, okay, we, it's like very Chinese looking, like, like looks red Looks like a lot of gold. Chinese staff members but then or Asian staff there's, members. It's, and, there's a casino theme. But then there's also luau dancers. And there's dancers. also luau. Yeah. So it's a, and then I don't know if you saw, I think you were writing something down. These two ladies who are cooks give each other a little smooch. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay, they just like smooch each other. Yeah. During this like party montage, and there's like gambling. This boat looks fun as fuck. Oh, for sure. And it's uh it's introduced by the guy who put the money together for it, uh Canton. Canton, yeah. And it's the Argonautica. Yes, the are the maiden voyage of the Argonautica. What do you say it costs? 460 million dollars. It's a lot. Dollars. Yeah, because this is spoiler alert, the boat fraud. Boat fraud. Because this guy thinks that it's too expensive to keep running this boat even though this is its maiden voyage. And so he's going to have uh, Hanover and his crew rob the place and then sink it and then collect all the insurance yeah, money. Yeah, so he's in on it with this crew of mercenaries. Yeah, you don't know that until a little bit later. Yeah. But, also, but we were joking that that was going to be <laughs> yeah. the case. It's like, dude, what if this guy's in on it and it's just boat insurance fraud? And then it was, and I was very happy. <laughs> I, don't, I think he built the boat with the intention of 
of committed. this fraud. Yeah, yes, I yeah. think he just purposely designed it. I think that's why yeah. it's in, the theming of it is absolutely nuts. It makes no sense. Yeah, because there was no thought to it. And he also says, like, uh, when he's giving the big speech to all the very rich passengers, he ends it with, like, good times forever and like <laughs> that and then there's a sign on the boat later that what's your it say fun boat or your, something yeah it's like your fun boat it's like yeah this is clearly they, fraud yeah you don't launch a million dollar cruise ship with that marketing your fun boat yeah not a lot of thought put into this thing but i don't know i would ride around on it i guess yeah, on this fun boat maybe yeah i mean not, I don't know, right not now. anymore i don't think actually i think never mind i don't know if i ever want to go on a cruise <laughs> It really, yeah, they got a damper put on them. I have never been on one. I know, I know me you too. Haven't I just either. wanted to go on one. I just want to experience it. Yeah. The idea of them is very weird to me. Yeah. I like. I, I guess I kind of get the ones where you stop different places. That makes more sense. That to makes me, more it's sense also than visiting places. You're than just... just stuck on a boat. You're just you're you live in a shopping mall for <laughs> a week. <laughs> but a shopping mall with a pool. Yeah, I guess unlimited buffet. And yeah, right. That's the thing. That's the thing that I I think would be great. Is you just. It sounds like Vegas on the water. You know. Yeah. And we love Vegas. I was gonna say we might actually really enjoy a cruise. <laughs> that would be a very revealing thing to learn about myself. As if we just decided, okay, let's this once, let's try let's try out a cruise because we want to experience it and then oops we end up loving cruises and then yeah. we become those people we can't they're too <laughs> they're too dirty they're so gross uh yeah so the plan is for the canton guy who owns the ship to disable it which he does successfully he loads in his little cd rom lots of good 90s graphics on computer oh, screens yeah, very in this movie. chunky 90s technology mm-hmm. yeah and, but he loads in his little virus disc and he stops the cruise ship dead in his path but on part not part of the plan is it gets attacked because don't forget this is a creature feature which i sometimes forgot watching this movie the lead up to there actually being the monster i completely forgot we were watching a monster movie because the setup of this is enough for a whole movie oh honestly. for sure this this insurance fraud with all these mercenaries and you have famka jensen as her you know it's there's enough going on but now there's also this monster and they kind of explain what it is there it they're like it's part of this so-and-so family of Sea creatures, it's like Uata, Uata. I didn't even because re- it didn't even sound real. Honestly. It is real though. Oh, it's real. Uh, Otoa, Otoai, Otoa. What kind of uh, stem group? Archipriapulid worm known from Cambrian fossils. So I think it's oh, like okay. an ancient thing. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because they're like, <laughs> oh, it came from the deep, from the deep South China Sea. Yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah, like the Meg. It's very Meg like. Or it's just that. because it's it somehow made its way up from really deep in the ocean. It's gigantic. It's gigantic they say I think normally they say when it's a few thousand it's like feet deep, it's tiny. Mm-hmm. But nope, no. It it's basically like it's like a bunch of tentacles that have teeth. Like predator mouths on the end. Okay. Of them. A little bit, yeah. They're a little vaginal looking. Got a little bit like of vagina Like any good dentata. creature design mm-hmm. should be. Because that's the fun part of creature design is often it's just like vaginas are scary. <laughs> 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 Which is another topic I would eventually like to do one day. Just like creature design. Like how Alien is just a giant phallus head. Yeah, it's a big old dick. Yeah. Love that that weird subtext of design. Anyway. Yeah, this thing is like a bunch of vagina tentacles a little bit. And so it's a bunch of these worms, but then later we find a big old... A, yeah, that's what I was... Is, so is there... Is it just a, one big creature with that's tentacles? What, that's what I thought. Because, But they keep referring to it as they... But they just might be ignorant of the big guy until the end? Yeah, I think maybe the reveal is, oh, it's one big creature, and so we see the head. So, like, imagine it's a giant squid, and they maybe assume, oh, all these separate tentacles are different creatures, but then you realize, oh, no, here's the head of the squid. It's all one big. I can't remember if there's any occasion, because they're blasting these things all throughout the movie, Yeah, and I can't remember if there's any occasion where they 
kill an individual tentacle slash worm and we see it from end to end. No, I don't think no, so. No, we just see them like blast the end of it and then it'll like but go yeah, away. Yeah, they keep referring to it as they and them. So I think they think it's e- either they think worms, either they yeah. think it's a bunch of creatures or that's its pronoun. <laughs> 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 the creature goes by they them. <laughs> that's canon now to me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to talk about our sponsor this week? Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Yeah, you know Hello Fresh meal delivery service. We love it. It's especially been nice because we can't really go grocery shop. Like we can't go bulk grocery shopping right now. Anyway, we're actually just trying to eat all the food we have in yeah. the fridge, just so getting that we down don't to have the to weird pack stuff in the cupboards. It. Yeah, we don't have to pack stuff. So it's kind of nice to get the meal delivery boxes, so that we know that we will be done with them by the time that we move, and we're not just gonna have food sitting there. That oops, now we have to worry about this. Exactly. It's it's great to have the pre portioned uh ingredients so you don't you're not buying too much or buying too little and then also just the fact that you know since we're so busy packing everything up it's nice that the meals only take like 30 minutes to make yeah and great. reasonably healthy as well which is good mm-hmm. it's yeah it's actually hard to like eat healthy when you're not just oh well, let's buy a bunch of vegetables and have some a fridge stocked with healthy stuff it's tempting and easy to get fast food but it's nice to have some healthy stuff (laughs) delivered so we have to eat that instead (laughs) and it's sustainable too it's like uh you know you're not gonna be over buying so you're not gonna have a ton of food waste or anything and the packaging is all recyclable too yeah which is good so uh if you want to try Hello Freyish. You can go to HelloFresh.com slash 80DeadMeat and use code 80DeadMeat to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box, which is nice because they're heavy. Yeah. There's a lot of food in there. <laughs> so, uh, additional restrictions apply. So go to HelloFresh.com for more details. And one more time, HelloFresh.com slash 80DeadMeat, code 80DeadMeat. Our other sponsor this week is Raised by Wolves. Hey, Ridley Scott's coming to TV. Yeah. We got him. We got, we got him. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> yeah, Ridley Scott's making his uh, US TV directorial debut. Nice. Raised by Wolves, an HBO Max original series that's about two androids trying to raise humans after Earth has been destroyed in a holy war, which oh, no. sounds like sad and depressed, but I, I guess the, the show itself is is meant to be uplifting oh, and good. curious and thrilling. It's not going to be a, a total downer, even though the, I think the premise is, I mean, it's it's a sci-fi. Yeah. 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 But And yeah. I mean, you can trust Ridley Scott with sci-fi. The man gave us Alien. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And that has such a broad appeal to, like Alien, you know, and those are, yeah, they're sci-fi, but Everyone likes Alien. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, it sounds like this is going to have the similar kind of uh, relationship with technology, whereas Alien, you know, it's those truckers in space. It's it's technology, but it's not all shiny and fancy because mm-hmm. this says, yeah, it's sci-fi, but it's also primitive. And uh, apparently the characters on the new planet in this show are aware of technology as a concept, but do not have access to it. That sounds cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm excited to check this out. And, you know, sometimes when there's new shows like this, that might be something that James and I watch or that maybe you would like us to cover. There actually is a companion podcast to the show that's oh. going to be coming out as this airs. So uh, there's it's hosted by Holly Frey, and that also starts on September 3rd. Nice. So that'll be like behind the scenes stuff also. And that's wherever you get podcasts. There you so. go. You got your supplemental yeah, material. Yeah, there's someone more qualified to talk about <laughs> a show than us just goofing around. So yeah, check it out. Raised by Wolves on September 3rd. HBO Max. But um, yeah, this thing is, um, it looks like in Hercules when he fights the Hydra, <laughs> that weird CGI sequence, it's- a little bit of that. It doesn't look great. And they're shooting this thing, and it's spewing ketchup and mustard, it looks like, all over the place. Mm -hmm. I do think the method that it uses to kill is a little terrifying and creepy, where it 
doesn't eat you it drinks you they say yeah that's cool and Where, then it spits out your bones that's yeah. why there's like a bunch of bones all those over the effects place. are cool oh yeah. th- maybe that's a lot of rap routine oh yeah when they go the, down to the lowest level and there's all those goopy they skeletons find everywhere it's basically it's trash pile like when, when you eat a bunch of chicken wings and yep. you leave the bones out like that's what they find but it's people <laughs> it's just all these skeletons and they're all like really goopy looking and well, there's also the dude who they like shoot a tentacle open and his yes. body falls out. And he's still kind of alive, but he's missing half his face mm-hmm. and he has a hole in his hand. It's it's the character's name is Billy. He's just one of the mercenaries, but mm-hmm. that was a cool. I moment. like that reveal. Yeah, yeah, he's got half a head. The Firefly ship is headed to intercept this uh, luxurious carnival cruise ship so they can rob all the people and you know do that whole plan. But they hit a speedboat that fell off of the cruise ship when it was attacked by Mm -hmm. the creature. And so that fucks up their boat. Mm -hmm. And they managed to get there and board it. And while uh, Leela, the the co-pilot, is left on the the fishing the, boat yeah, or whatever, she's left on the Firefly ship to to repair the hole. That one is enormous. It's a giant. This thing is in. This thing is at the bottom of the ocean immediately. Yeah, There's because a, it's this huge <laughs> hole. It's like as big as a person, and it's right above the water line. Yeah. Like as the waves are lapping up against the boat, water is sloshing into the boat, and we have played enough Sea of Thieves to know that that thing's going down. It's done. You're but done. But she's like, just she has like a welder, and she's just I like. Love melting metal uh, she's not even like patching it she's just like melting the ragged metal edges of the hole yeah, the visual this is so funny it's just it's like um that gif of that guy who's um there's like a bunch it, like his street is flooded and he has a shovel and he's like shoveling water just <laughs> <laughs> like the way she's just blow torching the edge of this giant hole and all i could think was that it reminded me of a video game animation where you go to repair something and the repair slowly fades into place like the actual animation of repairing something makes no sense yeah <laughs> That's what's going to happen is the wall of the ship is going to fade into view and she's fixed. Because she's literally just has this torch to it as water is it's, lapping over it. It's so stupid. Yeah. Uh, that's when she gets fucking killed right yeah, away. Yeah, she gets yanked, yanked out, out, the... out of there. She doesn't even get to die in a cool way. She just gets yanked out of the ship. Yeah. At least the other random dudes who die kind of off screen, you at least see some blood kind of sloshing in. And yeah. That's why I thought maybe she would be alive somehow mm. later, but no. Yeah, but I call bullshit that. That, that happens pretty early on. And then that boat doesn't sink, even though that giant hole is there that whole time. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. And they also just, they have these crazy looking, like, Captain Phillips looking weapons, like these. Oh, with the infinite ammo, infinite too. Infinite ammo. They put in a cheat code for that. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a spinning barrel. I think he says something about like 100 rounds a I, minute yeah, or some yeah. shit. I don't know. Yeah. But it's. These it's, can't be real guns. I don't know. If they are, I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. They are very automatic weapons that yeah. just fire. And the amount of times that they all fire them at once, they would all be so deaf. They'd be bleeding out of their ears. Yeah. It's so loud. Like the first time they fire them on the cruise ship because they hear a noise and they all fire, they like fire for a long time. And then uh, Han Solo tells them to chill out and they stop. But then they're like, but these guns were cool and just fire them for the fuck of it some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when the ship gets attacked, when the cruise ship gets attacked, all the passengers are jostled around. One lady gets pulled through a toilet. It is yeah. our one scene of mass hysteria and destruction, kind of snakes on a plane style, just chaos everywhere. And after that, we don't see the passengers anymore because apparently they all get eaten yeah. by the, this monster. The body count in this movie is a lot. I know. I was wondering what I would do with a kill count if I would count the skeletons or what. You'd have to somehow figure out the roster of this shit. You have to, like how many people were on it because you know he booked it to capacity. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it, if that's going to be possible to yeah, I count. I don't know, man. And then besides that, you have the crew also. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, I don't know if you can do this one. Mm-hmm. But I love that. I mean, yeah, the effects in this whole movie, like in this where the ship first gets hit by the monster there's just stuff flying everywhere. People are, are like leaping off balconies and going through 
panes of glass and yep. it's, it's it's the standard like a lot of fun mm-hmm, like just st- line up your stunt actors and it's like all right window guy yeah. all right uh lady falling across the, or over the banister it's very much like if you picked up this boat and just shook it around <laughs> is what's going on with these people but i i love that this because <laughs> titanic they would have filmed this oh wait no oh, w- <gasps> they filmed this before that changes That's a right. lot of things it does because they keep talking about how this isn't possible to ha- because of this. It's an unsinkable way that, ship. Yeah, it's a fucking unsinkable <laughs> ship. There's even, it kind of uses the same, because that was the mechanism on the Titanic that failed, right? Was those doors that it was supposed to. No, it wasn't to... doors. It were it was compartments right. where the walls didn't go to the ceiling for whatever fucking reason. And so the water, when it got in, would eventually spill over. Why wouldn't they build them all the way to the ceiling? I don't. No, because that's what I thought the the point was was like if if you know part of the ship gets punctured, I don't Only know why I thought they were doors where yeah you can you can close off. No, a section. from my memory, from my obsession with the Titanic as a kid, the hull of the ship had these compartments that could be filled up with water, but for whatever reason the dividers didn't go all the way to the top. That mm-hmm. was w- one bad thing, but the other problem was the way it hit the iceberg buckled a lot of the con- uh, the compartments all at once. And so oh. instead of just like hitting the front and like stopping it there, it filled up enough to where they all filled and the thing was fucked. Fuck. That's so crazy. Titanic's crazy, man. But yeah, this this ship has, it reminded me of that because it has all these like, extremely strong sliding doors that close the off. The automatic doors, Rushing yeah. water, yeah. I wonder if that's a thing. I don't really know how modern ships are designed no. to be. Because you never hear about like a cruise ship going down. No, I don't think they do. They just get really sick. Yeah, you just get the plague on them. They're like pre-COVID, there were instances, right? Of just like people oh, yeah. just... And there was a carnival like, ship in 2013. Yeah, where everyone was just trapped on board shitting themselves to <laughs> yeah. death. Yeah, it was... 2013 or 14. Yeah, yeah. That's I think that's the bigger danger on a boat, which... Mm-hmm. I mean, Septism. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, a few of the mercenaries get offed. Kano goes off to go do something and gets killed. Yeah, uh, they all die in pretty similar. Cliff Curtis, I don't like his death. That's him getting dragged around in a very uh, mm. theme park kind of mm-hmm. thing. And see, that the reason I don't like that is because you don't see what's dragging him, even though the water is like... Bloody, bl- yeah. And it's like shin high. It's like you should see whatever's dragging him around. Sure. But that thing just... He he gets whipped into posts and shit, mm-hmm. so he gets killed that way. And then uh, they're all together with the mercenaries, and they open a compartment, and fucking... Jimon Hinsu? Yeah, he gets axed in the head. Oh my god, that's right. That's what happens to him. He, just... he opens a door, and he's like, I think the money's back here. Money, 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 money. Axe in the head. Yeah. Yeah, holy, like right, just right between the eyes. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was unexpected for sure. And the guy swinging the axe was Canton, mm-hmm. the owner of the ship, who's doing the fraud, who you don't know yet. But then he swings the axe into that guy's face, and it kills him. And then the other mercenaries just open up with their machine guns and kill these random three passengers who yeah. look like older people who are hiding out <laughs> with Canton and the the cruise ship's captain, uh, who's kind of a character. And yeah, they just like murder these three people and there's a single line of like those were innocent people and then is no no one gives a (laughs) shit yeah dude also at one point canton just like smacks famka jensen in the face yeah when they find her robbing shit yeah fucking smacks her in the face dude canton's such a dick i I loved your description of him where what'd you say he (laughs) He looks like the the mean stepdad in a kid's movie yes yeah, Yeah. yeah i also think that this role is very jeffrey combs us. Oh, he yeah. Could this be guy Jeffrey is Combs such sure. a Jeffrey Combs. He it's it's like him and um. I still know what she did last summer. Yes. A little bit. Where yeah, the just, hotel manager. Yeah, very yeah, managerial asshole. Yeah, that'd be more fun to watch. I mean, this guy does fine. This guy's yeah, this a guy's having a good time. bastard. Yeah. The way he runs is very funny. He he's like he's like a Jurassic Park villain. Yes. You know, he's like the lawyer Finality or the, of the evil kinda. nephew in Jurassic World, mm-hmm. or the nephew in Lost World. <laughs> nephews are always <laughs> a good I don't know why it's just nephews <laughs> just scheming nephews <laughs> it's cause it's like removed enough to where you can be like fuck that guy yeah yeah I forget when I think it who, 
I forget who says it. Is it me? I think it's the dad from Bones. Describe something as total spooky town. <laughs> yeah, if someone gets on which that boat and favorite, calls it total spooky town. Which is my favorite thing. It's just, <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah, no, it's definitely total spooky town. <laughs> Especially when there's all those skeletons everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, they're they're all together. They start running from this monster who keeps busting out all the doors and walls. A lot of metal buckling in this movie for the the effects of like the monsters behind that door and mm-hmm. there's metal buckling and they slowly start to come to the realization of what it is. The captain of the cruise ship gets eaten whole because he's like, he falls through like a, a catwalk kind of situation and they're trying to help him up. And then like before they can help him up, the rest of the tentacle just yeah, and I could, him. I might have, maybe I, I am imagining this, but I could have sworn, because his leg is, is being pulled through this kind of small hole, and I could have sworn that you see his other leg, like, snap upward, so he gets pulled down into this hole that oh, is. I don't know, that other guy, that mulligan guy, when he gets eaten in the galley kitchen... <laughs> oh, no. that's got some because you call them harry potter effects when yeah. he gets pulled down by the t- and then it whips back up with his body sticking out but now the proportions are all weird because it's a cartoon yeah there's <laughs> <laughs> the best way i can think of to describe cgi like this is harry potter cgi and specifically the, the first, first the first and second movies oh, yeah. where they're either playing quidditch mm-hmm. or when they're fighting that troll in the bathroom mm. um the this first the people like the way we animated people's bodies they all have the same weird ragdoll physics that happens here it just yeah he looks like he's playing quidditch it's just i mean there's just a, there's a lot of you go through the boat a little bit and then you get to a new spot and then you do the arcade shooter like mm-hmm. it looks like an arcade game where you have the gun controller and you're shooting and you have to shoot off screen to reload it Mm -hmm. and it's all these different targets that you have to hit and then there's like an old lady who walks by and you can't hit her for negative points uh but that's what a lot of these like scenes are it's just them using these giant guns to shoot at these tentacles as they whip around the screen and just like trying to shoot them down everyone firing with complete abandon like famke jensen almost kills han solo three separate times (laughs) i do appreciate that at one point uh, he advocates for her to get a real gun. Yeah. Because she's carrying this very tiny handgun. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he, he's like, can we get the lady a real gun? And they, But then it's well, kind of played as a joke where they give her one of the big boy guns and then it's got so much kickback. She just falls backwards into the water. Yeah, I mean, it probably would do that though. I know it would, <laughs> but still. Uh, as soon as those two run into each other, they they want to fuck. Yeah, they do. Okay, so what's the eight? Because they filmed this in ninety six. So she would be about thirty. I can't say okay, for that's sure. Not she's so thirty or thirty one. She's like yeah. And he's he would be 40. probably forty five. I think if it was filmed in ninety six. So I don't know. I mean. Once, I guess. once you're 30, you, you no, I, no, no. I'm just saying, like, if I'm her, like, am I into him? Oh yeah, that's why I was. I asked you that. No, Would I think this in guy? general that that I don't give a fuck about that age difference. Whatever. I think yeah, once, once you once you're 30, you have enough life experience to yeah, decide fun. some things. I mean, honestly, I think for me, and this is such a this is such a whole debate i don't even want to get into but like i don't know your brain stops growing when you're 25 sure yeah fuck it like yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever but yeah no i'm just thinking like would i be into this dude i don't know maybe mm-hmm. he doesn't look 45 like and... maybe in some shots he does yeah but in other shots he looks like he's in his 30s i guess he's got that Han Solo. Although he he reminds me even less of Han Solo and more of the parody of <laughs> the Han Solo Balls. and Spaceballs. Solo, yeah. He looks so much like him. They do address his age too. Right in the beginning, they're like, "Oh, I thought you'd be older." And he's like, "I'm aging gracefully." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I looked up his age. I was like, "Oh, he's right." <laughs> Why do they think he'd be older? Uh, because of his reputation. He has a reputation that precedes him. Oh, it's okay. like, "Oh, you've been doing this for a while, right? Thought you'd be older." Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Piloting his Firefly boat. Yeah. When did Firefly come out? That well, was after this. Yeah. Way after '96 for sure. Yeah. That was like what 2000 probably. That's was that early 2000s, right? Mm-hmm. Did you watch that? 
Uh, not at the time. I watched it in college and was briefly obsessed with it. Really? And okay. Then, uh, I, I don't know if I would still like it now just because it's Joss yeah, whedon -y. I gave it a try. I can do it. Uh, yeah. I, there's weird. The episode order is all fucked up. Oh, yeah. I remember. Because it aired out of order. So you kind of got to like that. watch it in the yeah. right order to appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's got. Uh, isn't that one? The, the non Baldwin brother, Baldwin. Who's in it? Doesn't he kind of suck in real life? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I well, it's got. Which... I mean, I love Alan Tudyk, and oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Oh, at one point, there's this elevator drop scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this elevator falls for so long, and I'm I'm just thinking, okay, so drop rides like that, they have to be super tall. Like they're many stories tall to drop for that long but you don't even drop for that long on those this elevator falls for <laughs> so long this ship is hundreds of stories tall yeah, it's like tower of terror height yeah it really is like this ship if you could see under the water it's like <laughs> super deep it's just a skyscraper in the water i love it though this, by the way, just speaking of that impossible set piece and just the way this movie looks in general, every room in this looks like an escape room. They go into another room and it looks like it's a different themed escape room. But that also might just be a late 90s thing. Yeah. I think every like. Well, they're yeah, they're all clearly sets. They're all. Yeah. And everything is lit really well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm even thinking like. We were laughing last time we watched those Joel Schumacher Batman's um, R.I.P. That the sets in those all Wait, look R.I.P. Joel Schumacher. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But all the sets in those, we were just like these look like toys. Like it mm -hmm. looks, everything looks like toys. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's such a, a '90s thing. It's really bizarre. Yeah. Uh, Clifton Powell, he goes out during this pretty cool, you know, oh, our path is blocked by all this water, so we each have to swim through. It's one of those type situations. Mm -hmm. Alien Resurrection has the best scene in that movie is uh, that when the xenomorphs are swimming after them. But Clifton Powell, that's how he goes out. He gets grabbed by a tentacle and sacrifices himself with a grenade. Blowing that's, it up. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's just whittling the numbers down one by one. Uh, until eventually you get Hanover and Benny are split off, and then Canton kind of sent them all off on their own for him to try to escape on his own. He still wants everyone else to die. He's still committed. I love that he's still thinking, I can get away with I the I can still get this insurance run. money. Yeah. I just won't mention the monster, and I will be the only survivor, and it it'll is be hilarious. fine. Yeah, I'm sure the insurance, once they do the inspections, and once they go through, because I just did this after my car got stolen, you know, it's... I think it would be pretty difficult to do an insurance fraud on that scale. I don't know, though, because if it's in the area where it's saying it is super deep, they're probably That's not going to be able Who's to retrieve it. Go... That's why I want to sink it. But also, you're the only survivor. That's fishy. That's fishy, because the original plan was to have all the passengers <laughs> yeah, everyone and crew would survive. Live. Yeah. They just would have been robbed. Right. But now everyone's dead except for you. That's starting to look a little fishy, guy. It's a guy. little weird, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. so he's still committed to this fucking plan. Uh, but then Hanover, the mercenary head guy, is also still being a dick. And the first instance of it, I understand. Him and Benny are running from these tentacles, and they're like, the only way to slow it down is to feed it. Uh, and Benny's like, well, what are we going to feed it? With his, his voice. And Hanover shoots him in the leg. It's like, you don't got to outrun the bear. You just got to outrun right. the guy. So, But luckily, Benny hops into an elevator. He survives many times. He survives and... a lot. <laughs> but then later, Benny is like by himself and finds Hanover getting eaten by one of the tentacles, right? And for some reason, this renders Hanover mute. He is no longer able to speak. He's mm -hmm. just kind of shaking and like, Aw. So Benny goes to leave, looks back, sees Hanover in exquisite pain, and is like, comes back and gives him his gun, uh, presumably for him to kill himself or, at, or maybe try to fight this monster. But he gives him the gun. He's like, don't say I never gave you anything. And then he goes to leave, 
and Hanover shoots at him. Yeah. Why? But then the best part is that Hanover that was the last does go try to kill himself so he doesn't have to be liquefied alive by the monster, but there's no bullets. Yeah, left. he wasted his last bullet. But I don't, why would he shoot at him? I don't know. I guess, stupid. I mean, if that dude in that voice goes, don't ever say it and give you anything, I'd probably fucking shoot him in the kneecaps too. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Uh, so that's that couplet. And then, of course, you have Han Solo and uh, Famke Jansen, and they're doing their own thing. And they realize that since uh, he loses the parts he needs to repair his boat, mm -hmm. and so that thing's fucked. Yeah. And so they decide that since this thing has all these bombs on it, might as well send his own ship into the cruise ship, put it on like this little boomerang arc, send it back into the cruise ship to blow it up and kill this monster while they get away to a nearby island that they see yeah. on some sea dudes. Yes, and it turns into the Waterworld stunt show at Universal, which is the best shit ever. Yep. Universal, please never get rid of get it. Get rid it's of so it, I'm good. boycotting you. Yeah, we'll never come to your park again except for horror nights and yeah. other shit. Yeah. But... It, it basically, yeah, it's a jet ski stunt show. Yeah, it's it, a jet ski, but they're called the Sea Doos. The Sea Doo, yeah. It's like Sea Doo Keys. Mm -hmm. And so, fuck yeah, Sea Doos. They're riding it's around so, on these Sea Doos. It's dude. so fun. They're going down the same hallway over and over again, yeah. slightly decorated to look like different hallways. They're making hairpin turns. Yeah, they're, they're making 180 they're spins like in these narrow hallways and, and going like going through fire and so it's so yeah. fun i love it this See, is when uh, it goes all out stunt show. yeah it's theme park stunts there's i love like a it. ramp they have to hit a fucking canton tries to uh accost uh uh famke yeah. and, and take the sea dew for he himself he tries to shoot her in the face with, with a, like a flare gun a flare gun <laughs> she dodges it in a cool way when she jumps down to avoid it mm -hmm. that's pretty cool that guy he he doesn't know that they're gonna just blow up this ship so he thinks oh i can just escape using the firefly boat so mm -hmm. he jumps onto it and he gets blown up it's yeah i dude this wikipedia article it, 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 I should report it for style. It is not written in the appropriate Wikipedia tone because, just as an example, one, the plot summary is way too detailed. But just as an example for this part of the movie, mm -hmm. I will read what it says. Canton jumps onto Finnegan's boat, breaking his leg, but unable to disable the autopilot, his ride is a short and painful one. Oh, no. That nice. is not appropriate Wikipedia tone. That is flourishing your rhetoric. I'm sorry. I am here for a neutral, uh, oh, bone dry they're, they're summary. They're adding their commentary to yeah. the. I see. Okay. <laughs> I see. Yeah, but uh, so Famka and Han Solo basically go off a ramp. Oh, off wait. The they ship. did discover the giant monster. Oh, and, yeah. And he says. Now there's something you don't see every day. <sighs> we were trying to think of all those classics. That... Yeah, what'd you have? Oh, I mean, I could get used to this. Is is ultimate. Uh, I have got to get me one. I got to get me one. Yeah. Um. Oh, you're like he's standing right behind. He's me, he's he? right behind me, isn't he? Were you talking? <laughs> yeah. Just, I'm just trying. There's so many I, that I hate always. The the Rotten Tomatoes show that I interned at, uh, it was on Current TV. That had a segment called Screenplay Cliches, where it would just be we would pull clips from all these movies oh, of lines no. like that. And I want to do that since they're not around anymore because there are script databases online. So you can just search for yeah. a term and then you find all the movies that have that line and then you just fucking rip them all and put them in a super cut. Yeah. And it's like, hey, quit writing these into your script. Yeah. Like if, if your line is generic enough to where it could fit into any scene... To uh, it's so dumb. Like, it you know, there's something you don't see every day. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Come up with a better like, line. I think this is the part where we run. That oh, kind I, of hate shit. That. I hate that. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, yeah. While they're, by the way, while they're uh, riding around that jet ski, we get two double O shits. There are two instances where both of them together say, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. And oh, shit. they do that twice. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's insane. The, you even got them riding towards a closed elevator door, and he shoots it. I like And this. it opens it, but there's another door, and, and he shoots it. The oh, gun. yeah, she cocks the gun. He, like, puts the shotgun back over his shoulder. I like she cocks it. That. That's kind of it's fun. It's all out action stunt thing. It looks like T2 at times. Yeah. Like, I, I appreciate that they were just like, fuck it, we're going to go balls yeah. out. I, this movie must have been so expensive. Oh, yeah. Like, and even though the CGI looks like shit. It would have been very expensive back then. For sure. 
Uh, the the Firefly ship goes back into the cruise ship, like we said, blows it up. They're still jet skiing around, but like Chelsea said, there's a ramp that they and I, like as this Firefly ship it, arced yeah. into it, I was like, they're still on. They are going to launch out of that cruise ship with a fireball behind them, mm -hmm. and what happens? Exactly that. They yeah. Fly off this ramp with the fire billowing out behind them. It's kind of cool. I'm into it. And then they jet ski off to, they, or I'm sorry, they sea do they off. They sea do to um, what is supposed to be Fuck Island, where these two are just gonna fuck. They get there and they are ready. Yeah. For Fuck Island to begin. But then, uh, hey guys, hey guys, but I'm alive still. I was like, oh fuck. It, he goes, oh, I, I could take a walk if you guys want to, like, fuck real quick. Joey. 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 But then the but then. end of this is they hear a no something, they turn around, and there's a giant volcano. There's, like, the fucking smoke monster coming through the trees up, at them. They end up on Skull Island. They, they, they end up on Peter Jackson's version of Skull Island. Yeah. King Kong. It's There's, ridiculous. like, something coming through the trees at them, and, yes, an active volcano. Like, what the fuck? And then, oh, yeah, and see, here's this other thing with this Wikipedia article, okay? As the camera pulls back, the island is revealed to be primordial. Finnegan is heard saying his movie catchphrase, now what, as the film That's ends. That's not his catchphrase. He says it in one Re time. Report this article for style. Maybe if we both do it. Oh, now will. what? Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he said it a bunch and we just didn't realize that because those like are just two words. Yeah, those are, yeah. Primordial, interesting. I know, right? I was like, that. Volcano still exists. Yeah. No, man. I, I'm telling you, whoever wrote that was But I mean, it article. would be cool if that was. If it is Skull Island, then sure, because that has dinosaurs and shit on it. Yeah. Is this supposed to be a setup for a sequel, or is this I just... don't fucking know, man. I don't... How did it do, uh, box office-wise? I it, don't... Came, opening weekend was number eight. That's that's not good. It, I don't see a budget, but its total intake was eleven million. No, no. they 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 surely lost a ton of money on this. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, budget forty five million. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well. Well, that explains why we don't get our primordial fuck island sequel man yeah well they tried they tried yeah no it's not a good movie um it's not but it's fun it's fun enough it's fun i don't i don't need to watch it again no uh roger ebert put it on his least favorite movies of the year i think nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that was that's that that's the last review we're doing in this apartment yeah we Jesus. ended with fuck island <laughs> That seems, it's just, again, it seems right. Sure. It's so right. We go out on Fuck Island. Yeah. So, okay. Again, we won't see you guys next week, but week after that, we'll do our, our goof around mailbag. Yeah. So email. To kick off the new era. Yeah. Of dead meat. So email whatever. Email. I mean, not whatever, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Within reason. Uh, you can also follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C R E V C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, DeadMeatStore.com. And like we said, DeadMeatPod at Gmail. Send us whatever to your chance to be mentioned on the podcast. Yeah. As we sit in our empty new house and talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of echoes. Very I'm echoey sure. episode, probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Until two weeks from now, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Me Podcast. Bye.